So I wanted to show you here how you can use the Tracks Editor as a tool to help you set up your pose-to-pose -pose blocking of your character animation. And the nice thing I like about the Tracks Editor is that it allows you to focus on the pose and the timing rather than mess around in the Graph Editor. So here you can see I've got a timeline that's got three different poses. Uh, the arms are out, the arms are up, and then the arms are down. And if I want to change the timing of this, I can move uh, one of these up and down the timeline and so it happens much quicker uh, and it allows me to focus again on the performance. If I want to add a new pose in between here I can middle mouse drag and drop that in there and now you can see how it drops to the middle there so it's very quick and very intuitive and uh, it allows you to focus on the timing there. So I'll show you how I set this up. So I've got my rigged character file open here and the first thing I want to do is change my layout so that I can see the tracks editor. If I come over here to my panels uh, layout menu and I right click on any one of those panels I can change it to a perspective tracks and outliner view and that's just a convenient view. Here I've got my outliner view, here's my tracks editor and here's my uh, perspective view. I'm just going to move this around so I can actually see my character. Now the first thing we have to do is create what's called a character set in order for uh, the tracks editor to work with this. A character set is nothing more than a group of animatable attributes that you would actually set the keyframes on. So it turns out that since my character is rigged, it's being controlled by these NURBS curves. So if I want to animate my character, I would pick this NURBS curve that's a control curve and move that around. And then I would set a keyframe on that position. If I'm going to use the tracks editor, I have to set that up first as a character set. So what I want to be able to do is to select all of my control curves or all of my NURBS curves first. So I can do that by coming up here to the edit menu and saying select all by type. And if I choose all of my NURBS curves, now that's all of the animatable attributes in this character. So with those highlighted, I'm going to come down here and say create character set. And if I choose the option box here, it allows me to name this character. So I'm going to call this guy character set, CS for character set, and create that character set. Now that I've done that, if you look down here underneath the timeline, you can see that there is a new character set in this drop down menu. And so that's currently active and selected. So now that I've created that uh, character set here, you can actually see that it shows up over here in the outliner as the character set and if I expand that selection these are all the attributes that are animatable for that character so here's where you would set all your keyframes and I can scroll down and these are actually all of the uh, attributes that we selected when we uh, created that so these are where you would set your keyframes so it's all available for you here uh, in the outliner so I'm going to save this file and then uh, reference that file with the character set into another scene. So I'll come up here and I'll say file, save scene as, and I'm going to call this guy rig CS for character set and hit a save on that. So now that I've saved that rigged character with the character set in it, I'm going to come up here and say file, new scene and I'm going to reference that character into a new scene. So I'm come up here and I select my guy rigged character set as a reference file and when that comes in now you can see how uh, it's also got the character set in here and it's got the reference name as a prefix here. So the character set is still intact and I can start animating with this uh, character set in the tracks editor. So the first thing I'm going to do is to switch to my uh, view where I can see the perspective tracks and the outliner and then I'll just repose this so I can see it. Now the character comes in in this default bind pose. The first thing I like to do is to create a pose in the tracks editor that is the bind pose, the default uh, position there. So I'm going to come down here and create a pose based on this default bind pose. So I come over here to my tracks menu and choose pose with the option box. When that comes up it gives me an opportunity to rename this pose. So I'm going to call it bind and then click create pose. 
and what that actually does is create a snapshot there's no visible change in the interface but it's creating like a snapshot of the character in that pose if you want to see that pose it's been added to the clip library so if I want to see what that clip library looks like I can come over here to my outliner and switch that over to the visor panel so I'm choosing panels and visor and that brings up the visor interface in my uh, panel here so what I want to be able to do is to switch this over to see not the paint effects but I want to see the character poses so I can click down the line here and select character poses and when I do that it shows up here as the bind pose because that's the pose that I just created so now that I've got this pose in my clip library, I'll show you how we can add a couple of more poses in here. So I'm going to push in on my character here and select a couple of these control curves. And I'll push them up here so the arms are in an up position. And with the arms up, I'll create a new pose create pose option box and I'm going to call this arms up and click create pose and you can see that's added to the library and then I'll just push them down and create another pose and name that arms down so now if I want to confirm how these poses are in the library I can mouse over the pose in the visor panel and right click on that and say apply pose and you can see how the character assumes that pose If I want to see what it looks like in the arms up I can apply that pose and then the same thing with the arms down so you can very quickly confirm that these poses are all working in your library the next thing we want to do is start to work with these poses in the tracks editor and in order to do that we want to add our character to the tracks editor right now there's nothing in here but the soundtrack and what we want to be able to do is to list the active character set in the tracks editor so if I come here to the tracks menu and say list and load selected characters it will add our guy rigged character set from the currently selected uh, character set now I can start to insert some poses into the timeline, the tracks timeline here. So if I come up here to library and say insert pose, I can choose my bind pose and that gets added as a frame in the tracks editor. If I drag my time slider down 10 frames and insert another pose, I can insert the arms up pose and then I'll go down another 10 frames to frame 20 and insert another pose. So now that I've got these poses in the timeline, if I scrub my time bar, you would expect that the character would switch into each of these poses, but that's not happening because of the way Trax is set up. This first pose, the default bind pose that we put in here, is overriding all of these other poses. And in order for me to switch that, all I have to do is right click on that pose and then come up here where it says edit clip channel offsets. When I select that, I can scroll down in the attribute editor to the channel offsets section. Here you can see where it's either set to absolute or relative and what we want is all of them absolute. So I'm going to click all absolute here and all of those assets are now absolute values. I'm going to go down and right click on the next clip and do the same thing. You can see it's mixed. I click all absolute. Now they're all absolute. Same thing with the final pose. I'm going to edit that and set that to all absolute as well. Now when I scrub my timeline, you can see how the character assumes the different poses that are in the timeline. So one of the nice features of the tracks editor is that I can also middle mouse drag a pose from the uh, visor window. So here you can see he's going from an up pose to a down pose. Suppose I wanted to add a new pose in here. Uh, I'm going to middle mouse click on the bind pose in the visor window and drag and drop that right between those so that when I drag it he assumes the bind pose before going to the down pose. So now that you've got your poses in the timeline you can start to focus on your timing. When I play through this particular clip you can see how the timing is affected by where it is in the timeline. If I want to uh, add more time between two poses 
all I have to do is click on that particular clip and drag it down the timeline. So if I want to uh, click on this, I can pull out that clip and now the timing between those last two poses is exaggerated. If I want to speed that up, I can make it shorter and bring it back in. The other thing I can do is to select multiple clips and adjust the timing there as well. So if I drag a box around these three clips, you can see they're now acting as a group. If I want to slide those to the left and play through that, now you can see how it goes slower between those two poses. So you can see how the Tracks Editor makes it simple for you to focus on your timing of your various poses and use that to create a pose-to-pose -pose blocking pass that you can get approvals from either your director or your clients.